they tell me there's still some Cohen's in the area, but I haven't been able to, to locate those. I haven't been able to trace them. So. Any other questions, you guys? No. I watch the um the investigations on YouTube that they do the overnights. I have not watched it. I've been in one, not for this house, but for Moon River. I was, I was one of the reenactors. Oh wow, that's that's yeah. crazy. I went to Moon River when we were here um in October and um. And um, I felt some energy the third day I was there. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> you can see the remains in the wall here where that ladder would have went up almost vertically connecting those two doorways with the house. And that would have been the entry. Now the original courtyard would have been dirt. There would have been pigs and chickens and there would have been vegetables, herbs, and flowers planted out here. But do you guys know where there would be flowers? For the smell, but not just from the animals, from the people as well. The death would have they believe that if you bathe too often, you will get ill and die. Right. So the men's massages and the, the, the flowers in the lake pond, they help mask that odor. <laughs> wow. Now, the fence originally went to the front corner of the house. That was blocking this uh, Cohen's department store. So she tore all of that down. Fortunately for us, she threw it back here. So when we went to lay out the garden, we used that savanna gray brick to lay out the garden. Mm -hmm. But it's not just that. This is our way of kind of honoring and remembering those enslaved people. You can see their fingerprints. Mm -hmm. We've got a few sets right over here under your feet. Mm -hmm. and then oh, a wow. Set here. And that's their fingerprints as they push that mud down into the mold. And this is our way of kind of honoring them. That's local. That's the fingerprints of the people that laid this or the, the, the slaves? That would be the, the fingerprints of the enslaved people who made the brick. Okay, I gotcha. I gotcha. Now, the house itself is built out of red brick, covered in stuff, so it's poor to look like it's brick black. This is a Greek revival, it's the type of home that people are growing up with in St. Dominique, right down to the style and the color. Right. Questions, you guys? Okay, the, um, the, um, the, yes, yes, there's something that, the, why, why is it here? So it does a couple things. It helps keep the moisture in the ground and it uh -huh. leaks calcium into the ground. Gotcha, gotcha. But they also used it to um, make um, like bricks and stuff, didn't they, at one point? to make a brick called Right, right. I'm going to let that last person check this one. Welcome to, it's called a raised basement, basement, this is the working level of the home. So you can see the home is built down into the earth, and that's to help the temperature stay a little bit cooler. The half wall, by the way, is which is three quarters of the way around the home, um, would have had shutters, not window panes in it. The building originally had two load-bearing walls here, and it would have had slate points. So sets of arches that would have arched this way and that way here. The staircase would have started here, went up a little more vertically with a wall on either side of it. We feel like these two areas were the main cooking kitchens for the family, and we believe that because the dumb waiter originally set where that display case is on the right. We would have went up the staircase, arrived in front of the dumb waiter upstairs. And this is where Ms. Cohen had her mannequins on display. Off that half wall there, she built out cabinets. You see the little stairway through the door? Mm -hmm. At the top of that, we'll set a stairs within the entry door into her department. Right. 
Now, apparently, even in the early 50s, open concept was a thing because Miss Cohen came in and she tore out all the way around the walls. She didn't like that to take the morning, so she poured concrete in that part. When we went in this Monday, we tried to get the concrete off the place and just put it in the place of Monday and just put it in there. One of the years, that young man was still going. And so, what happened to the security service that was still That's the armchair. If you sit in it, you're supposed to feel like sit on it. She feels some sort of energy. No. No. I was just wondering about these. These are the um, servants' clothes? No, this would have been a chemise. And it would have been hand embroidered. This is what the ladies of the house would have worn. They'd have put on a chemise. Right. So this would have been the first uh, undergarment, <coughs> then a corset, then another chemise, then petticoats, and then a dress. And they wonder why we fainted. I told my husband, I said. That's a mystery to me. Okay. Well, and I, I think about how strong your legs must have been. With yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I would have been just like butt so naked. I feel, I feel pretty sure that the man who invented mm -hmm. the fainting couch was responsible for this dress code. <laughs> so, how long was that, uh, that fashion of dress? <clears throat> for many years. Yeah, like decades. Decades, yeah. That makes me break water smart. Yeah, no kidding. The simpler life would have wasn't all that simple. I mean, if you think about it. And these little areas, by the way, here where it's open, they would have cut that out, shaped it, stitched the out, uh, stitched across here, and then done that border around that. that okay. Absolutely. Now, I mean, you guys who like the spookier side of things, is there any what Haitian? Um, Pink paint is. So people believe that pink paint is A J I N T paint. So people believe that spirits were not cross water. So the Sylvanians created a bluish green paint called hank paint, and they painted the outside and the inside of their homes that color. So they thought that would keep the spirits out. And over on these walls here, were once covered in hank paint. Um, <laughs> wow. We have pieces from the original dump later here. Now, the fireplace is made out of that banana brick. You notice how when it goes up, it turns into a red brick. Yeah. Because red brick is a stronger, more sustainable brick. The savanna gray is a little more coarse. We're pretty sure two of the ingredients in the savanna gray was uh, river mud and ash. So we have uncured, uncured. They tell me that in a matter of a few years that that uncured will start to crumble. But I look at this fireplace, this home was built in 1840, and while we're starting to have some issues here, that's not too bad. Actually, it's very minor. Yeah. Yeah. So they were known for the big parties that overflowed to the square and the porches. Mm -hmm. So there's sometimes we think all four of these kitchens were cooking food. One of those events. Other than that, we think this area was mostly used for sewing, canning, and preserving. Has everybody heard the old nursery rhyme, the monkey spins the weasel and pop goes the weasel? Yeah. Yeah. I had you guys, earlier this week I had a group on tour and I asked that and they were all like, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> I don't know if I like this and I only got a whole generation, a whole group of people who never heard that. <laughs> Had you heard it? <laughs> all right, so the monkeys, by the way, would have been the children. And this is a weasel. So if you're going to weave some material, you determine how much thread you needed, how many revolutions of your weasel that you needed. If you had enough money, you could get a weasel that had a pen, and you could set that to the number of revolutions that could pop. 
Pop toast, Weasel. Now, when you think the monkeys, those children, wouldn't have been just the children of the enslaved people, by the way, also would have been the children of the family. Right. The death rate was so high, and children up to age eight, that frequently they weren't even named until they turned eight. Really? Anybody been into the old Colonial Cemetery or Royal Groves? We did earlier today, yeah. A whole section of it, like a whole corner of it, where the playground is, is all for children. It's just nothing but children buried there. Right. Now, that being said, Matilda had three children that actually died before the age of six, and they were all named. Right. I like to think that she named them when they died. I'm sure that they did. She did. Any mother would do that. All right, you guys about to hear the most haunted room in the house. She's not kidding. <laughs> this is where I captured that picture. Yeah. yeah. And um, we were standing here. The guide was where she, about where she's at, just a little bit in, inward. I'm on this side, and I kept seeing it poking its head out around that mm-hmm. corner there. Like, almost like it was looking at me playing peekaboo. Mm-hmm. And I was like... I nudged the woman beside me, and she saw it, too. So there's a spirit of a six-year-old girl here, and I've heard some people say I wanted a little boy, too, but I don't know about him. Right. So, guys, this is Dr. Frank Sorrell. This would have been Lucinda and Francis's third-born child. Mm-hmm. Um, he's the one that was about a year and a half old, and she died from yellow fever. Now, he also suffered that same one the months that grandfather and father had. Mm-hmm. He graduated the University of Pennsylvania with a medical degree. told his parents that he needed to travel and to the world. He was in family connections in France. He toured Europe. He returned here in 1850 and set up surgery. And they tell me he was the most well-known and sought-after surgeon of his time because the survival rate was 45%. Today we'd be like, 45%, I'm going to get back to you when you're getting out of there, right? <laughs> we know he figured out not everybody needed the same amount of chloroform. And... Often these bullets would shatter bones, so there's a lot of amputations. So I feel like maybe just washing his hands a more frequently that help. They say some of these bullets come out of some of his actual patients. Now in 1855, well, if you sit on the couch, supposedly something will mess with your legs and things. I'm not too confident. No, I'm not. I don't want him touching me. He finally married. He retired on family plantation land. Some of these medicine bottles were found here on the property. They tell me if your medicine was in a blue or a brown bottle, that was an indication that it was poisonous and it needed to be mixed or diluted with something else before you took it. If your medicine was in a clear bottle, you were good. What, did they use a lot of laudan? Laud- what is that? Laudan. Yeah, laudan, yeah. Laudan, yeah, back then. I mean, was that something that... I think it was a common, commonly used thing. Right. Probably a few thoughts. So these uh, original to him? These... They're not original to him, um, but they're from that time period. And he never fails if I have a surgeon or assistant surgeon come in. They always say the same thing that what they use today pretty much still looks exactly like that. So well, I always think, well, either we haven't come for it or we're the super geniuses that's got it yeah. right first time around. Yeah. And by the way, he'd have been everything. He'd have been the dentist, the midwife, the herbalist, the surgeon, all of it. So would they have had an herbalist before that then? Mm-hmm. They didn't know what they had. Uh, so they it wasn't could. just for two years. So with that patient, 